All right, so we have Larry to the right and we have Chris on the left. So Mono Blue Devotion, again, versus the White Red Aggro deck. So as you can see, Larry was the second seed. Yeah, so Matt Costa actually eliminated the number one seed yesterday in the top eight. So Larry is now our highest remaining seed, which means for the remainder of the tournament, he will get to be on the play in all of his matches. Yeah, how important do you think the sideboard Banisher Priest is going to be? Uh, the Banisher Priest is going to be pretty good, especially when you have cards like Thassa that the deck has a lot of trouble dealing with. Yeah, exactly. I think so, too. All right, so they're underway. Larry started off with the Judges Familiar. Uh, and now he has a second island, so he swings it for one. Think we're going to see a follow-up here? Well, yeah, but Chris has a very important play here in Soldier of the Pantheon. It has protection from Multicolored, which is a lot of Larry's creature Especially base. Especially Frostburn Weird. That's yeah. the most important one. Frostburn Weird, Judges Familiar, Night Veil Spectre are all Multicolored. Larry did have one of his few monocolored creatures, though, as he had a turn two Tide Binder Mage. Yeah, I mean, he can't block the Flyers, but he can definitely attack right past them. So that's really important. All right, so there is a Tide Binder Mage. So it looks like Chris is willing to offer a trade, and this would actually be a good trade for Chris because Larry wants Blue Devotion. Right, he, you see there's a Master of Waves hanging out in Larry's hand, so he can't really afford to lose those two blue mana symbols. Exactly. So there's a second Plains, and we see, wow, two one-drops here. Yep. Boar's Elite and Dry Militant. The triple one-drop start is really kind of the MO for this white deck. Oh, They're it playing really is. Boar's Elite, Soldier of the Pantheon, and Dryad Militant, all as one-drops, yeah. four of in the deck. Well, it looks like Larry does have a pretty strong hand. I see a Muta Vault. We do see the Master Waves. I believe he has another Judge's Familiar. So, you know, trading off a Judge's Familiar for, say, the um, Dry Militant is, is actually not that bad. Yeah, no, he has the full suite. He has the turn three Thassa into turn four Master Waves available to him. Okay, so he's going to take that route. And yeah, almost certainly, because that means the Thassa will get to attack next turn, as well as him getting a swarm of two ones. Sure. Now, do you think Larry's just swinging with the Judge's Familiar? Um, it looks like he's, he's he wants to trade. He wants to trade, which is interesting, uh, because if he trades it, the Thassa will not be a 5-5 on the next turn. Yeah, and he also loses one extra elemental token from Master Waves. So kind of interesting. Normally with Mono Blue Devotion, you never want to lose your permanence. Right. That's the idea of the deck. If he was committed to losing the permanence, it, it seems like he's changed his strategy. He didn't trade away the Tidebinder Mage because he wanted to hang on to his Devotion, but I think once he saw the triple one-drop start, he decided that he had to get to change his strategy and now wants to trade. Exactly. Now Chris is uh, looking uh, to see what type of blocks Larry might have here. So he does trigger Battalion, so he has a 3-3, three, three, a 2-1 that's pro multicolor, and just a basic 2-1 here. So Larry can go for the double trade. If Chris has a Brave the Elements, This is going that could be really rough for him. Yeah, I believe he uh, probably is not going to lose that tie binder Mage. I think that's too valuable since the Blue Devotion there is for two. Right. So uh, trading the Judge is familiar with Drive Militant, that's fine, you know, save some damage. Um, and uh, maybe he doesn't care so much that Thassa is not going to be turned on. Yeah, you do see the Brave the Elements in Chris's hand. That's accompanied by the frontline medic that he now makes off a of Muta Vault. Yeah. All right, so Larry draws another island, but I do think he has a second Muta Vault in hand. So those Muta Vaults might come in handy later on, especially to, uh, you know, get around those Brave the Elements. Yeah, they're going to be important on both sides of the board. Um, remember, both of these are aggro decks. And I think, as you said, he kept the Tide Binder Mage because he wants to have enough devotion when he plays this Master Waves. He doesn't necessarily care about activating the Thassa so much as getting a critical mass of two ones. Yeah, exactly. So he's going to have uh, four tokens here. And it looks like Chris is not going to be able to do anything about it. So, yeah, this is pretty huge. Yeah. Chris does have a couple options available to him. That frontline medic is doing a lot of work because Chris's attackers will be indestructible at exactly. the very least. I don't, that, he will still have to win the race, which could be a little difficult for him. Yeah. But, he, and he has that one last hurrah in a brave the elements. Yeah, now it is kind of important for that Thassa to be turned on because at least the Thassa could just, you know, kind of fog three damage, fog three damage, rather than Larry might have to start chump blocking here. Right. Yeah, so that, that one play with the Judge's Familiar trade is, is pretty interesting, to be honest. You know, doing the math, he is on 13. So if he would have taken it, it would have been on 11. And that only would have been 10 damage. So Larry st still would have been okay here. It's the same number of turns. But it's the, oh, now it's the Muta Vault. Because, but he didn't know about, about the Muta Vault on the decision. So right, the Muta Vault was played after the decision. Yeah, so I guess Larry had to make that play. Otherwise, he, he would have been dead here. Well, the, the Muta Vault doesn't have an effect. So Yeah, because Brave doesn't actually yeah, affect Muta Vault. It only affects white creatures. Yeah, so even though that, that would be the 11th and 12th damage, it wouldn't be able to get through. So right. it would have only been 10. Turns yeah. Both ways. yeah, I was right the first time. Yeah, it, it is only 10 damage. Um, but now it's a different story. Yeah. Now Chris only has 8 damage on the table. Yeah, Chris can continue to come into the board here too. He has drawn a Daring Skyjack for the turn. The problem that he's going to have is that his creatures are really bad at blocking. Oh, yes, definitely. Now, I think Chris has to just swing in with everything. Yeah, they're only indestructible when they attack. 
um, Boros Elite really is only a card when it attacks. Yeah, does he have, does Chris have land in his hand? Because if he has land, he could play the, uh, the, the Skyjack and attack with the Muta Vault as well. I believe he does. Okay. So I kind of like that line, kind of, you know, clear up some of Larry's tokens because Larry's going to have to do something here. Let's see, he has 8, 10, 15, the Muta Vaults, but he'll have one blocker left, and he would still have to turn on Thassa. So Chris is not really in danger of dying quite yet. Yeah, he's not going to take 19 next turn. He could, he's going to take a lot of damage, but all Chris needs to do is get enough damage through so that a Brave the Elements could pose, could be lethal the following I turn. I think what Chris is worried about is a second master, because a second master would actually kill him. It would be three, six, yeah, second nine, master 12. Could kill him. Yeah, the second master would actually kill him if he only had one blocker left. So uh, I guess maybe that's what he's worried about. Yeah, and that's a fair thing to be worried about. So he's going to leave back the Muta Vault. 3, 6, block. 9, 12, 14, 16. I think he moved... Because if he... No, leaves, say, yeah. If he leaves back this Muta okay. Vault to block and then has the Daring Skyjack as well to block, he doesn't really have to worry about getting lethal at all next turn. Yeah, that's fair. And the second Master probably wouldn't even do it that turn. Chris is on 19. Yeah, 19 is a lot to do in one swing. and I yeah, Even yeah. with another Master, it, you're yeah, right. It's it'll be a couple of points close. short, yeah. Okay. So this is a swing. It's for eight with indestructible, and so Larry just take takes it thing. all. What's his game plan here? Is he just you know not worried about a brave the elements? Um, I may if Larry. It's possible that Larry decided he just can't play around brave the elements. Okay. I mean the way he like the way he would play around it is by making a lot of chump blocks there. So his I think either he needs to block everything or nothing. You know those yeah. are his two lines, and he's going with the block nothing. Well, I mean those muta vaults could have actually bought him another turn. But now they can no longer buy him another turn because the Skyjack will have flying. So that's three points in the air. He'll go down to two. And one of those three attackers well, it would have to get in. Get through. So, yeah, yeah, so that's exactly is, five. Chris does have a lethal next turn. Yeah, hmm. Okay, so uh, maybe Larry could have done something else. Yeah, that Judge's well, familiar play, I still think, you know, maybe yeah. came back to haunt him there. Well, right here, I mean, right here, he either has to choose an aggressive line or defensive. You know, he can either choose to play around Brave the Elements and make the big chump block, or he can just say, well, I will win if he doesn't have it, and I make no blocks, which I think, that's the, like I said, that's the play he yeah. made. Given the way the cards played out, and, I mean, even early on, we, we kind of noticed that the Judge's Familiar would have actually brought Chris down to 18. Then that one attack where Thassa would have been active the last turn, Chris would have been at, um, went from 18, uh, 18 down to 13. Or he would have had the chump block. But yep. from 13, it would have been lethal. More importantly, the difference between 5 and 3 life on Larry's side really hasn't been that relevant. Yeah. So, I mean, even if he goes activate Muta Vault, activate Muta Vault, he's only facing down 12 damage. So okay. Chris would, would survive at 7. Well, let's see what he can make out of the board here. Um, I don't think he can put 19 damage through this turn. Yeah, no, he can't. And, and you can see Larry's really thinking about it. Has his hand on his head, just, just wondering, you know, where did the game go wrong? Is there anything I could do to, to kind of survive another turn? He does have the Judge's Familiar in hand, which will turn on the Thassa, um, you know. But the, uh, the only problem is, is that it's still not going to stop that Brave the Elements. That's why Brave the Elements is so good. It's essentially one mana, you know, deal eight damage. One mana, deal seven damage. Yeah, it gets you those last points of damage so frequently. Oh, it really does, yeah. Okay, so there is the Judge's Familiar. And... Larry is just contemplating. All right, so I think what Larry's trying to do now, he's trying to think, okay, well, if he doesn't have Brave the Elements, what are my best attacks? That's probably what he's uh, going through right. his head right here, yeah. And I think it's probably involving Thassa and all the uh, all the tokens at minimum here. Maybe those Muta Vaults would want to get in there, but it seems like he's probably going to leave them back and just... Just well, think. If he's playing well, to the no brave line, he's going to assume that there could be five creatures attacking him next turn. Sure. So he has to make sure that he blocks four. He can't actually, you know, so he can put the, yes, yeah, so he's going to have to leave back four blockers. So well, he's well, back Master of Wave, Tie Binder Mage. Ideally, he could only leave back three because the Mutaval would be a 2-2 two -two and the, the Soldier of Soldier is a 2-2. Two -two, so yeah. he could just only block three. Yeah, but he's yeah. left back up to five, five blockers. Five blockers, which, so. which the line doesn't make that much sense in general. Um, because it's, it's not really playing around what he should be playing around, which is Breed the Elements, which he can't play around anyway. Right. But, yeah, it's just unfortunate. Uh, Larry was on the play this game, um, and it looks like if as long as everything goes according to plan, Chris will be able to uh, win this game and uh, be set up nightly, uh, nicely having a, a one-game lead in this matchup. 
All right. So I think Chris is just doing some some extra math, just just to make sure. Okay, what what can Does really he have go wrong? to block with the skyjack? Yeah. Do I have, have to do I have to worry about like uh, you know a cyclonic rift? Is, is there anything that could really you know uh, cause this to go to go sour here? Maybe maybe a rapid hybridization he might because I mean Larry only has one card in hand, yeah, so he shows him to brave the elements, and I think Larry yeah just took a look at his life total, realizes uh, this is probably it. He's gonna. Try to activate the Mutavolts, but it's not going to be enough to, to, to get in the way. All right. Yep. Yeah, so he just shows him. Yeah, he didn't even need to, to do anything with the, the Mutavolt there. All right, so Larry is up. A, uh, is down a game. Yeah, Chris yeah. Perone takes the first game. The white-red aggro deck pushing into what could be yet another finals for the deck. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it, it won in Los Angeles. It got second in Dallas, I believe. Uh, the red white devotion. Got the red white devotion in Dallas. Okay, sure. So so Lunquist won with it, and now yeah, it could, it could be in the finals again. Yeah. It's up a game. All right. So so Larry right now is down a game. He's gonna go to the sideboard. He's gonna try to figure out what can I do, what can I board in for this matchup. As you can see, both players are taking a look at the deck list right there, trying to figure everything out. I'm sure last night they probably went over this a couple of times, probably talked to their friends about this. Yeah, it's one of the advantages of having that break between the top eight and top four. But while those players go over the deck lists, we're gonna bring you back into the booth to okay, do one great. of our giveaways. We have a, we're gonna do trivia once again. All right, great. I love the trivia. Yeah, trivia. So the rules to the game are that we're gonna ask a question, and if you're watching, you have to be watching the live stream, not the rebroadcast, obviously. But you have, to, you have to put in an answer with the hashtag SCG Premium, which is sure. on the bottom of the screen there. If you have the correct answer, at the end of all of our top four matches, we will select one correct answer to win six months of Star City Game Premium. Yep. All right. So the question here is, pretty much all you have to do is let us know, all right, who are the three commentators at the Star City Invitational in Las Vegas in three weeks? Yep. Who's going to be doing the commentary? All right, why don't you tweet at those guys if you like them? Uh, if not, you guys could just, uh, you know, hashtag SCG Premium and tweet at SCG Live. Tweet at everybody, why not? All right. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Someone's going to walk away with six months premium. Six and, months. and, like, the, like it's a good way to start a Sunday. Yeah. You know, it's like six winning months. something. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you aren't the one who wins something, we do another giveaway in the finals. We do a full year of Star City Premium. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. And at least you got it right. You could tell, you know, you could tell everybody you got it right. You could brag about it on Facebook or something. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, so you're talking about the match. Let's go ahead and look at their sideboards all right, for this. We're going back here. All right. So Chris is, you know, obviously he's up a game. Uh, he's uh, in pretty good position. What is he going to try to do to, to, uh, to take this down? Well, he just needs to room. The, the biggest problem in his deck against this mono blue devotion deck are going to be things the like uh, like Master of Waves and an activated Thassa. Those cards are pretty hard to deal with. Exactly. And we saw Master of Waves was really potent that last game. Yes. Uh, so he's going to board in. He has four Banisher Priests in his sideboard, and that's going to be one of his key weapons for fighting against that. Yeah, the sideboard on screen actually is going to switch for you right now. All right, there so, you go. so there you have it corrected. So it's definitely going to be the four Banisher Priests are coming in. Yeah, I would say for sure these four Banisher Priests are coming in. They, they deal with Larry's best cards. And probably the two Flames of the Firebrand, correct? The two Flames of the Firebrand... Pro it's, it's, I, well, it seems pretty good, right? Like it doesn't kill the Master yeah. Waves. He's pro-red. It doesn't kill the Master, but what it could do, it could kill like a Cloudfin Raptor um, that's, you know, not really evolved and, and something else like Tie Binder Mage. It could do Tie Binder Mage and Judge is Familiar. Uh, I mean, it has yeah. some... some the the yeah. difficulty is... That, so... I'm, I'm Night Veil Spectre. There, I mean, you want to kill Night Veil Spectre, right? Yeah, I am wondering whether or not he play, makes that play because, like, one of the cards you're mentioning there is Judge's Familiar, and you can't actually, to Flames a Judge's Familiar and something else, you have to do it on four mana. Sure. And that's a lot of mana for the White Red Aggro deck because we saw, I think, I think that was, he won the first game on turn five. Yeah, he did have four mana there, but I, I understand what you're saying. I still think Flames is pretty good. It is pretty good. Yeah, Pacifism. What do you think about Pacifism? It, again, Pacifism is a two-mana way instead of a three-mana way to stop uh, Night Veil Spectre. It is a way to stop Night Veil Spectre. So, I don't know. I know in some matchups, Night Veil Spectre is the best card out of Mono Blue. I'm wondering in this matchup whether how, how much Chris has to care about Night Veil Spectre. It is a three-mana 2-3, two, three, which when Larry's been forced into the defensive role in this matchup, sure. and Night Veil Spectre is much better at being aggressive than defensive. Yeah, I mean, Chris does have a card like Daring Skyjack, which could just you know trade, trade up for it. Right. It's like a two-mana 3-1 compared to a three-mana 2-3. Yeah, uh, I think the question is how many cards Chris wants to board out. Yeah, he doesn't really want to, you know, um, thin his deck out too much of, of solid creatures and, and a good curve or whatnot, and obviously he wants to leave him to brave the elements. On the other hand, Lara has a couple of uh, options as well. He could bring in Domestication. Um, you know, Aetherling, obviously not. Jace, Architect of Thought, no. Jace, Memory Depth, no. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll uh, see what Larry decides to do here. Sounds great. Uh, Larry will once again be on the play this game. 
All right, looks like he's taking a look at his hand. I see at least one island, maybe two. Now, when you're playing this deck from Larry's side, you know that he is generally the defensive deck in this matchup, right? Yes, he, he can't he is. be as fast. If he has a hand that is aggressive, as but not very good at defending, do you think he can keep it and try to race, or does he have to look for things that are better at blocking? I mean, it's it, it's really tough, and it really just comes down to what Larry think about the matchup. And here, as you can see, both players decided to take a mulligan, which, in my opinion, actually favors Chris here. Okay, so tell me about that. All right, well, the thing is is that normally the Mono Blue Devotion deck is, is pretty good where if it has time to set up what it wants to set up. But if Larry just goes turn three Thassa, doesn't have Devotion, him just scrying is going to do nothing against, against Chris's aggressive deck. So kind of like going back to that affinity analogy, every card... Every card has this critical mass element to it. So exactly. as your hand gets smaller, it's hard to put the pieces together. Yeah, but I mean, if Chris was playing against maybe, uh, maybe like a mid-range deck or more of a control -y deck, you know, just having a Thassa will allow him to draw a half a card each turn, essentially. Mm -hmm. But here, that half a card won't do anything for the most part. If he plays a Thassa and you count Thassa drawing half a card, Thassa will probably draw about one or one and a half yeah, cards by the end of the game. And it's not going to do that much in this matchup. But against a control deck, it would go a lot a lot longer. Maybe it would draw like up to six cards or something. Yeah, we do see a Jace Architect of Thought in Larry's opening hand. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I, I don't think he's going to bring the extra Jaces from the sideboard, but but pr probably two is the right number here. Maybe yeah. three? He may not have the flexibility to start cutting Jaces. Yeah, exactly. But having four against, I mean, obviously the minus one minus zero is very good, but it, it still is four mana, and sometimes the, uh, the 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 white aggro deck doesn't even care about just a minus one minus zero; it could just plow through anyway. Yeah, some of the cards uh -oh. he has to get rid of are cards like Bind to Thassa. Larry's on five. Now. Larry is on five. What it looked like the hand he he had there, I did see a bit of it. Um, it, it was single island Jace Nykthos Mutavault Island, which. It's just too slow. Uh, yeah, that's... If his first play is turn four Jace, it's not going to do anything. No, and he didn't even have the second blue for turn four Jace, so he either draws a land in that hand, which is terrible because yep. there's too many lands, or he doesn't draw a land, in which case he can't play the Jace. Exactly, exactly. I think Jace would have been so much better here in this matchup, say, if the Mono Blue Devotion deck was something with, like, blue-black Devotion, where if he had, like, Doom Blaze or something... Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, and then and then he could play Jace, refill, get more uh, removal spells, and, and handle Chris's small creatures. But because of the... You know, the fact that Larry pretty much has almost no removal. I mean, rapid hybridization is not a removal spell, especially no. against a deck where if you're just killing a 3-1 to give them a 3-3. Three, three. In a racing situation, cards like Bind to Thassa become removal because you can you can make or force your opponent to exactly. attack. But but Chris is attacking anyway. Yeah, yeah he, he, he wants to attack, and Bind is just so slow because it comes down to turn four. It's probably not even going to do anything. Yeah, I imagine they're not even they're not in his deck. For oh, this no, game. yeah. Yeah, Jace is definitely... I mean, I don't think Jace is insane against the White Red Aggro deck, but it's definitely better than Bind. All right, so on five, we do see that Larry... All right, looks like you like, give a head nod. Lands. I see a mutal... No, no it, it was, was just, just a, a mutal vault. The only land was a mutal vault. vault. Okay, all right, so Larry's on four. All right, so it's not really looking too good for Larry. Um, I don't think Larry envisioned this last night. He probably, you know, went to sleep, no. and he was like, all right, in the morning, I'm going to get the nut hand. It's going to be turn one cloud for an raptor, turn so, two frostborn weird. When you're, mul when you're in a mold of four situation here, I know I'm saying there's not too much to work with, but what I always hope is that my opponent has kept a greedy keep so like it's very possible maybe chris kept a hand with a great curve but only one land and he's saying boy a second land makes the you know makes sure. the hand you have to hope that your opponent stumbles a little bit yeah. because you're going to need some time to recover yeah i mean once larry goes on to four i don't really think he could go down to three right we said we've talked about that before sometimes you just keep every four yeah i mean i, I guess if it's just four spells he has to go to three yeah but you don't want to have turn one just to say go, go to your it's just too bad yeah there's a cyclonic rift it looks like there's i think i don't think he has a land no he, has no, he does land. have one land yeah so, so he just has to keep it. yeah no, nothing really could do all right so he decides to keep and uh they're gonna start off there is an island and there is the cloud raptor. raptor oh and wow he, he's gonna need yeah, running. he yeah. just threw the temple too, so he d definitely has a second land, and he does have the red source. Yeah. All right, so he draws a tide binder mage, and he just passes the turn. So his hand is like chronic rift, pretty chase, quick. tide binder mage. Yeah, it could be quick here. So if he draws three running lands, that's his best. Is is he still in it? I mean, of course he's still in the game. Is it a high percentage chance of him winning? Obviously yeah. not. All right, well, there's number one, so we do okay. see Tide Binder Mage. So he evolves Cloud from Raptor, which is very important because Cloud from Raptor could just trade with that Soldier Pantheon yeah. if, he, if he chooses to do so. I like, how like. He, I like how he played that, that he recognized that because of his mulligan, he didn't attack with the Cloud from Raptor. Exactly. I thought that was really heads up for him. Yeah, he wants to keep that Tide Binder Mage around here. 
So I think Chris probably won't even attack with the Soldier of Pantheon here. He might because he might be worried about that Cloudfin Raptor evolving again. He doesn't really want Larry to play, say, for example, like a, a Frostborn Weird and make the Cloudfin Raptor too big for the Soldier of Pantheon to ever get through. So actually attacking here is pretty good. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if Chris just swings in with the Soldier of Pantheon here and hopes well, for the trade. When you're up three cards on your opponent, every trade is really good exactly. for you. Exactly. Oh, he's going to brave the elements. That That's pretty interesting. Well, he's, yes, he either can trade Raptor for Soldier or Raptor for Brave the Elements. I do like that he traded it for Brave the Elements. Do you there. really? Yeah, I, d I think Brave the Elements is a good card that punching through a wall, but I just don't think... Larry's hand is going to set up a wall very well. Okay, all right. So now Larry essentially, well, that actually goes to his hand, that priest he kept, not the graveyard. Yeah. All right, good. So now Larry actually essentially mulliganed out to three because him cyclonic rifting the priest and captain is just him it's this card. a life gain card. Yeah, yeah, and like normally life gain cards are just a mulligan, you know. Um, so it's, it's bad, but what can Larry really do? Yeah, Chris isn't without his own issues. He doesn't have a third land here. So no, he, he does. He doesn't play. Oh, it's in pl okay, <laughs> so he just has the third land. So yeah, he just, exactly. So yeah. he has absence of Banisher Priest, Frontline Medic. And the Precinct Captain. Precinct, he can go Precinct Captain Boros Elite, which I, yeah. I think is I mean, that's the play he probably makes. Uh, I mean, just playing the Frontline Medic, he's going to... Like, what can Larry really do? Right. Either of them are, both of them are pretty good plays. Yeah, all right. So, so Soldier Pathian, does it attack this turn? Does it not attack? I think it depends on which line he goes well, with. With the Banisher Priest, priest line, it certainly attacks. Yeah, okay. I think if he'd gone with a double creature line, I would say no, it doesn't attack. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I like that line. So Larry draws another another four drop. He has Jace, Jace Master. Yeah, so he's dropping to 11. Larry's going to need two running lands, and even then things will be pretty rough. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and now this he goes is, with Ajani on top. Oh, wow. That should be lethal with the Ajani. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if Larry tutored every turn, he would still be a, a huge underdog, maybe impossible, but... Is this the last turn here, or? Well, if I believe so. Well, that Banisher Priest certainly doesn't help things. And that'll be it. Yeah. Chris Barone, All two right. games to zero, defeats Larry Suriel. Chris Jeez. is on to the finals. That, that was crazy. That was quick. That was quick. Game it, one was really impressive.